Hi, this is Marcus, and if you're gonna stay with me for about 10 minutes, you're gonna learn how to create this 3D visualization of the bike park track. We're actually gonna use a Strava activity as a data source. We're gonna learn how to trim line features. We're gonna create labels on the 3D landscape. We're gonna learn how to animate strokes and layers along feature, and we will get a basic understanding on how to work with the 3D landscape sample project. Okay, so let's jump into this. I've got a Strava activity here and I'm going to export this activity as a GPX. Once I did that, I can simply drag this GPX onto my browser. And by double clicking it, I will fit my view to the feature we've just imported. So I'm going to drag this out of the feature collection and remove the feature collection. And I'm going to rename this one track because this is my whole GPS track that we did. I'm going to hold Alt and duplicate this feature. Um, and now we're going to extract like a part of it. So I'm going to click the feature properties button here. And what we can do is we can trim this line feature. So as I drag these um, sliders around here, you can see that the line is actually trimming. And to make this pretty exact, I'm going to zoom in here. And you can point by point trim the feature here. There we go. Now this track is called Flow Country. And what you can see here, because we imported a GPX track, those coordinates have actually timing information. So if I would animate this with GeoLayers, you would see exactly where I had a break. And this part of the track is actually uh, five minutes and 65 seconds. But I don't want to use this timing information for what we are going to create. So I'm going to uncheck that one. So I'm good to go for now. I'm going to hit apply. Now we need a project. So I'm going to open up the projects panel here and search for the 3D landscape simple project. I'm going to select trap coat mirror because that's the plugin I'm going to work with. Now this project comes with a bunch of map comps. I'm going to select the control map comp here and double click our track to fit my view to Winterberg. I'm not going to change the view so I can already finalize my map comp. Now let's draw these tracks. I'm going to select my texture comp because we always want to draw on the texture comp that the displacement that trap code mirror does works also with our tracks. Next thing we need is styles. So I'm going to hit edit styles here and I want to create one style for the track. Let's select the dashed style here and I'm going to increase the dashes to like dots and I'm going to reduce the opacity to 50% and I'm going to change the layer blending mode to add here. And this is my track. Now that we need two more colors, I'm going to drag those to the start here and I'm going to select white here and remove all the rest. There we go. Let's hit apply. Now with my track style selected, I'm going to hit draw feature. That's the track I did the whole day. So let's get started with the interesting things. First, I'm going to unlink the map comp view here that I can browse my map independent from my map comp. Now I'm going to select one of those colors here. I'm going to select the pink. I'm going to make sure that my current time indicator is at two seconds and I'm going to hit animate feature path. Now GLA is created and animated with the trim path property, the flow country path here. Next step, we're going to add circles to the end and the, to the start and the end of the track. So I'm going to select the ellipse tool here, double click it. And After Effects is going to create a huge ellipse. So I'm going to twirl my way down to the size and I'm going to change the size to 20 pixels. And there we go, pretty small again, but that's the size I want. And what I want to do is I want to change the color to our stroke color here. I'm going to call this cap. And what I want to do is I want to animate it exactly how our path is building up. So I'm going to go to two seconds, so to the starting of our animation again. And with the cap selected, I'm going to hit pin layer to feature and select animate layers along feature. Once I've done that, 
our layer is exactly following our path. Now that's neat, but we have a problem here. I want to do the buildup in like two seconds, but the cap animation is pretty complex. You can see loads of keyframes here and changing the duration or like doing easing on this could be pretty complex. But we got a solution for this. Um, with the cap selected or with any pin layer selected, you can have a look at the effect controls. And there is this effect position progress. And what this does is if you enable it, you can simply drag this one value from zero to 100% and it's gonna animate your layer along the path. Now this comes pretty handy because we can simply hold Alt and click the stopwatch here to create an expression and expression pick whip the trim paths property of our line that is animating. Done that, I can collapse all of this because I can change this keyframe here and my cap will always follow the animation. So I can change the duration of this animation to two seconds and I can also easy ease it. I did this by pressing F9, by the way. Now what I wanna do is I wanna duplicate this layer. So I hit Control D and I wanna attach it to the start of my path here. So once the layer has been pinned, you can simply unpin it by selecting it and click pin selected layers in the toolbar here. Done that, this layer is unpinned. I can simply drag it to the beginning of my track here and simply pin it to the map again. Now, this is already a pretty cool visualization of the track. So let's have a look how all this looks in 3D. What I wanna do is I wanna create a subtle camera movement here. So I'm gonna to go to the start of my animation and with my controller map come selected, I'm gonna hit keyframe here. So this will create keyframes on all the latitude, longitude, zoom, bearing and pitch. But the properties we're gonna animate is only bearing and pitch. So we're gonna remove those three keyframes here. And to change the bearing and pitch, I can simply right click and drag my map here. And as I release it, GeoLayers is going to update my 3D visualization here and it also created keyframes. Now, I would like to label this track. So first I'm going to define a position where this label is going to sit. And by opening the feature properties, you can see this tiny label icon here and you can drag it around. And I want to label this feature always on its start. So I'm going to zoom in here go to the start of the track and put the label there. So let's hit apply and click add label here. Now this label still sits in the wrong position. It's down here, but that's only because the label is not displaced with our trap code mirror layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the height of the layer. So selecting the label, going to its effect controls and adjusting the height. And I'm going to push this up all the way to the starting point here. That's it, now it's perfectly attached to our 3D landscape. What I'd like to do is I would also like to change the color of the label. So I'm gonna go for an effect called Tritone. And what I wanna do is everything that is white in our label here, I'm gonna color it in the color of our track here. Everything that's black is gonna get white and what you want to do is in the mid-tones here, you're going to select like a mid-color. There we go. Now, let's add another track. So I'm going to repeat all the steps. Cool, we're done with our animation. So let's sum up. We used the GeoLayers 3D Landscape Sample Project to create a visualization of these GPX tracks. We imported the track from Strava, we trimmed it, we created labels on a 3D landscape, and we added some camera movement. I hope you liked the tutorial. Have a great day. Bye.